from why that specific group of people was called on flight 828 to Zeke not being able to remember a single thing, let's take a look at all the questions we still have after the manifest finale. After five long years of scouring the internet for fan theories and studying multiple Easter eggs and clues, we've finally made it to the end of Netflix's manifest. As expected, the whole thing was a massive roller coaster ride, emotionally speaking, and the passengers of Flight 828 had their final landing in Season 4, Part 2. While the 10 episodes did answer some critical questions, like the flight's disappearance and the divine consciousness, or the meaning behind that peacock, the writers still left plenty of room for interpretation and left us hanging with more than a few questions completely unanswered. Like for starters, why were passengers on that particular flight called? In the final episode, there's one specific scene that I keep coming back to. Remember when a very frazzled Michaela and Ben confront a grim reaper who seems to form from the ashes of the dead passengers? Michaela asked him about why they were chosen, calling herself and the others a group of 191 regular people. She's not wrong to ask that, right? The writers can't really expect us to believe that this selection was completely random at best. Now the creepy Grim Reaper doesn't say anything to her, but continues to hover over some of the passengers, as Mick and her brother reveal their obedience to the callings and talk about their good deeds. What's interesting though is that when they run toward the Grim Reaper, it just sort of vanishes into thin air, and so Michaela never really got her, and our question answered. If they weren't selected at random, why were they selected at all? Why was this one particular group called on Flight 828 to carry out such a monumental task? The writers really wanted us to think about this one, right? To make matters even more complicated, out of all the passengers on that plane, Cal always had the strongest connection to the callings. So why was he chosen to tip the scales? He got his infamous scar after his encounter with Henry Kim, which marked him as the dragon. Thanks to Olive and TJ putting their brains together, it was revealed that the scar meant he held the power to save the world, or in simpler terms, tip the scales, as he'd been touched by Sapphire. But of all the passengers on the plane, why Cal? Did the Divine perhaps recognize something special in him? Or was it because he was the only one with enough resilience and strength to carry out that task? But that also leads me to another integral question. Why doesn't Cal remember anything? With the sapphire inside of him, he knew that he had to sacrifice himself for the sake of all humanity. The sapphire within him and the sapphire in the piece of Noah's Ark bonded together to create a path of light for all the passengers to follow. It led them to the destination where they would face their death date judgment. But after taking one for the team, Cal simply vanishes. Passengers who successfully beat the judgment entered the glow and returned back to 2013, like nothing had ever happened. So when Michaela and Ben step off the plane to meet Grace and Olive, their first question is to ask about Cal. While Cal does return, he's back to the age he was when he boarded the original flight, but he also has no recollection of his time away. It also doesn't seem like he ever went away for 10 whole years. There are no scars or sapphires inside of him to prove that he's been with the divine consciousness. So why can't he remember anything? In this entire 10-year timeline, did Cal even exist for real? Mind-boggling stuff. But season three also sort of threw the audience for a loop when the show revealed that the divine consciousness added five years to Cal's age. Maybe I'm missing something here, but I can't piece together why exactly did they add years to his age. If the plane landed safely and never vanished, that would have been Cal's real age. But what exactly was the purpose of that? Did the divine consciousness deliberately make him older so he'd be mature and smart enough to keep up with the callings? Or was his aging up process a result of something or someone else entirely? But the divine consciousness itself is a huge mystery, even after the finale. Most of what we've seen of it is a simple white glow. So naturally, the audience can't help but think about the events that happened in this very mysterious realm. Like, what did the passengers actually do in the divine consciousness? Some fan theories have suggested that the passengers were actually living in this realm all along, considering that they lived in the same amount of time the plane vanished. But this doesn't make sense if you think about the fact that the passengers were getting repressed memories or that they could enter and leave the consciousness. Weird, right? That ending didn't really offer an explanation, 
about how this all-knowing consciousness works and what the passengers were doing in there during all that time? Did they enter some sort of alternative timeline or universe in the few hours that they were on the plane? And if they were able to experience a life-altering event like that, were they the first people to do so? Or did Alzurus also have to stop an apocalyptic event in the past? Yep, another mystery that the Stone family tried to resolve was that of Alzurus and his crew, who went through a similar experience back in the 16th century while they were on a boat. According to Alzurus' journal, he and his passengers aboard the boat had been lost at sea for 10 long years. Just like the passengers of 828, they too returned mysteriously, with no recollection of their disappearance or what had transpired in the time that they had been gone. Once they came back, they could hear strange voices inside their heads. Alzurus said that this was the voice of God, and he became a spiritual entity among his people. He even mentioned the word glow, which could be connected to the same glow on Ben's hand. Alzurus mentioned the death date as well, but from his journal, we don't know if he survived it or not. Ben believed that Alzurus talking about the Silver Dragon may have actually been the airplane that went missing and reappeared. This further cements the fact that Flight 828 and Alzurus's boat were at the same place at the same time, and the only connection between the two was the terrifying electrical storm, which was probably the reason behind the mysterious disappearances. So, was this also a case where, like the passengers on Flight 828, Alzurus and his people were stuck in the divine consciousness for years in order to prevent a massive apocalypse and wipe out all of humanity? Or is it connected to the present-day events that happened on the flight, all part of some bigger plan to help the people of 828 in an effort to save the world? Let's not forget that nothing on the show is unconnected and that every new discovery has a purpose. But not all of these discoveries always make sense. For instance, after realizing they're back to their previous lives, the first thing Mick does is find Zeke. But when she finds him, he can't remember a thing. While she makes it her mission to make him fall in love again, I can't help but wonder, why can all the passengers remember everything? But Zeke can't. I mean, technically he kind of died at the end, but the viewers know by now that disappearing or dying doesn't really mean anything significant in the world of 828. So is it because Zeke died for reasons other than the death date? Or is it because the writers knew the fans would riot if Mick and Zeke somehow didn't find their way back to each other? Still, I'd love to get Mick's investigative skills to try and explain this one in any way that would make some actual sense but I guess good for them to continue their love story, where hopefully this time no airplanes, callings, death dates, or mysterious disappearances will stand in the way of true love. Even if 2013 Zeke has simply no idea who this strange chatty lady inside his taxi is right now. While Manifest won't be returning with a season five, I still have my fingers crossed for a possible spin-off series, so all of these darn questions, plus many more I haven't mentioned, can finally be answered. So, from Zeke not being able to remember a single thing, to why that specific group of people was called on Flight 828, these were the questions we still had after the Manifest finale, 